police campaign against cultism and other vices, Pokakov, seeks to enhance the value of life of the society by ensuring crimes and criminality are deterred before they exist through advocacy, rehabilitation and empowerment. Pokakov is the concept of providing meaningful alternative pathways to those most likely to join organized crime groups like cultism, armed robbery and kidnapping, just to mention a few. The goal is to prevent crime, not catching criminals, basically. Preventing policing. Pokakov is all about policing for the society instead of policing of the society. Joining us now is Olabisi Okuobi, Chief Superintendent of Police and National Coordinator of Pokakov. Good morning and welcome to The Morning Show. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Abate. Good morning. Good morning, Thank Nigerians. Good morning, all right, so Pokakov, I, I love, you know, it's policing for society and not policing of society. A number of people, I know um, Pokakov has been around for a while, only suspended in January and now has, you know, received new lives. So let's share with us what um, it's about, the successes you've experienced and what this new strategizing by the Inspector General of Police looks like. Thank you very much. Yeah, the new Inspector General of Police felt that Law enforcement, it's not enough to tackle criminality in the country. And that's why I came up with the issue of preventive policing initiatives, which we have the unit called Poker COVID, the Nigeria Police Force. And what we do basically is advocacy, campaign, because we believe that, the Nigeria Police Force believe that prevention is better than cure. As has been said, it's quite more expensive to, 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 carry out law enforcement. If you look at from the time of um, um, alerting the police about the criminal activities to the arrest, the resources in arresting, in prosecution, even by the time the convicted criminal eventually gets to prison, it still costs, um, it's not cost effective. But if it is prevented, we don't have people who are likely going to join courtism and other criminalities then the, 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 the expenses on preventing is even, it's almost at zero level. Then the country is the one that is the best for it. There will not be much of um, victims of criminalities. Then uh, we see that um, from the Inspector General of Police point of view, he sees that courtism, and um, courtism, it's like the mother of all crimes in the sense that with courtism, it's from there you see armed robbers come out. It's from there you see those who are kidnappers, because some kidnappers that we've arrested in the past, you see them while they're making their confessions that they belong to a particular court sect, and they normally go out and, you know, it's just like that. So it is more of prevention. And we see that this is something that is about destroying our youth. The youth almost everywhere, courtism have, have since left the shores of campuses. It is now on the streets. You now see people previously in the 50s, 60s, 80s, 90s, it was the tough of undergraduates. But now everybody, almost everybody is in it. Those who, who are shoemakers, um, those who are focanizers on the streets. You just see them fighting and killing themselves. The unfortunate thing is that the, the strength of the nation, as in our youth, are being cut down every day. Um, not too long, an Abia State University student was cut short on the day he finished writing his final exams. And this is something that you see that is happening almost everywhere. Killing is nothing anymore. And not just the killing of themselves now. It's now, you know, it, it's now, um, it, it has now migrated into using it as a leverage to perpetrate criminalities in which every, almost every other person that is in the environment where they are uh, carrying out the activities is a victim. So what has changed? The Inspector General of Police, IGP, Egberto Okun, Olukari, the MP and PhD, came up with the fact that Pokakov needs to be in the mouth or in the consciousness of every Nigerian. It's a campaign that, is, that, is, that comes with collaboration with members of the public. It's a community policing tool. It is not just all of, it's not just all about the police officers. I have civilians who we collaborate together. As we all know, criminality is a product of the society. So if we have to solve that 
problem of the society, we have to involve the community. We have to involve the society towards ensuring that we both carry out the advocacy, we both carry out the campaigns, then it now comes with rehabilitation now. So what the IGP wants is it's that it should be in all the geopolitical zones, all the states of the Federation, it should be spread even up to the world levels, where everybody will have it in their consciousness that there's a campaign against courtism and that courtism and other criminalities have consequences. Just like in legal states, it's 21 years imprisonment if you are caught as a member or if you are mobilizing people to join courtism. And we just need to let our youth know that you don't have to waste your life. You know, in prison, you don't have to waste your life. Doing criminality doesn't pay. So. Uh, what, what also has changed is uh, we now have a website, www.pokakov.ng. We have some phone numbers too, whereby you can reach us to us. Some of them even join, not because they know why. They don't even really know why they are in it. It is why maybe just through peer pressure and they are in it, they don't even know how to come. So if they want to come out, we have phone numbers, helplines that they can call. Then what, what is very interesting with this campaign, because the issue is when you campaign, come out of it. When they come out, we, we, it comes with campaigns, um, disarmament. We use the opportunity to mop up arms in our society because we have arms everywhere. Not too long ago, the Pokakov Ekapi in Southwest, in collaboration with Ogun State Commissioner of Police, they embarked on campaign against cultism in Shagamu, and many youth came out in their droves and they denounced. Weeks or months later, they came out with guns, over 100 pistols and everything, you know, object of their violence, axes and everything. They came and we were able to mop that up through a traditional realized palace. So that, you can imagine what so, such arms and ammunition would have been used. Those would have been victims. So it comes now, it now comes with rehabilitation. Okay. When, okay. Yeah, okay. It's good you cited one of the activities. But yes, sir. I'd like you to tell us more about some of those activities you said across Nigeria. Yeah. Now, that would be interesting. And then, who are your partners? This is uh, a police, community policing, public relations, uh, you know, initiative, yeah. you know, to prevent courtism and other vices. It's an advocacy program, yes, essentially, sir. from what you have said. Yes. So, are there challenges that you are facing? And then, who are your partners? Because the police cannot do it alone. Sure. You just mentioned a traditional ruler. Yes. So you need traditional institutions. Yes. You need schools. Yeah. You probably need other agencies of government. So just to have an idea of the structure, you know, of partnership that you are working with. And Thank then you, more sir. of your activities and challenges. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, with the partnership, of course, we seek the partnership of every Nigerian. But now to be specific, traditional institution religious organizations, not only Christians, Muslims, we should not live in ignorance of the fact that we have traditional worshippers too in the country, so we partner with them because these Yao Yao boys, they have people who do some of this voodoo for them where they kill people. So we are not leaving anybody out of it when it comes to religious groups. Then we partner with schools. Uh, then we, we also partner with um, markets, um, traders, we partner with with uh, motor park operators. We go there, we talk to them. So it's not just something that is only for it's for all areas or all facets of um, community or socialization that we partner with. So we we partner with higher institutions too. Just yesterday we had a campaign at um, a Sherry or Shun roundabout where we had area boys and schools and they came on board and some of them were like, by the time we finished talking to them, they were like, when I told them, I used one Yoruba word for them, and we were jolly. That means the prison doesn't look like home. No matter how, how uncomfortable your home is, it's, it will still be better than the prison. So in the, at home, you can even eat because um, a company came and was feeding them. I don't want to mention name before you charge me for advertisement. <laughs> I was feeding them with their product and and I told them that even when you get to prison, you can't get this to eat. So, yeah, well, jolly prison is not like home. So, in view of that, we some, some of these guys, they came and they were like, okay, we should give them numbers that they will call us. Some of them, sh they showed the enthusiasm of wanting to come out of some criminalities. So, for the partnership, 
we 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 are we are we are looking towards corporate partnership because it is not something that the police alone can do. Yeah. Number one. Then for the rehabilitation. Rehabilitation talks about skill acquisition for some of these guys. We have people who have volunteered to teach some of these repentant courtes and criminals how to make paint, good quality paint, how to how to make a lot of manuf man man with manufacturing sense. Because when we are giving rehabilitation, when we are giving them skill acquisition, we are giving them with the mentality of uh, of uh, of a labor creator. Of, of an employer's mentality, not the mentality of, okay, get the skill and go and start looking for a job. Start creating labor. And because we know that some of them, most of the crimes we have are economic crimes. Some of them claim that it's because they're hungry. And then don't let us forget that courtism or court, court involvement, it's a profession on its own. It's not just association. To some of them, when they come together, they make themselves available to land grabbers, when they want to go and overtake another person's land, who are those people they use? They just say, oh, there's this Aya boy there. There's this Ake boy there. Uh, there's this uh, Vikings group there. And they bring them together. They go there to go and disrupt the peace of that place. They, they, when they want to, maybe there's a, there's a need for assassination. They look for court boys because they know that they are readily available. So that's why we think that it's not enough to campaign. It's not enough for them to drop their arms. Then what next? Yes. Because if they drop their arms, those people can stay and tie them. And some of them, for those who have come out, they've made us realize that it's a wasted life. It's not, they've always been living in fear because they're always afraid that something can happen. Police can catch up with them. Maybe they may arrest somebody somewhere and the person will snitch on them that any day, it is not when, but it is, it is not um, if, it is when will they be arrested. That is one. Two, they just need empowerment. So part of the partners we're looking for is government. There should be state government now. To, because it is their purview to take care of their citizens. So when we're talking about skill acquisition and facilitation of scholarships for some of them who are exceptionally brilliant, there are some of these boys on the street that when you talk to them, they're like living calculators. Give them equations. They'll be telling you without pressing anything. So they are there, right there on the street. So it's just to facilitate scholarship. That's why we use the word facilitate. There are individuals like yesterday at Ali Mosho, somebody offered to give 20 scholarships to those who will come out to say, okay, this is what they want. So, I asked you about challenges. Oh, the challenges in, we in have. In terms of you know, responses from the target audience. Because some of these boys will say, well, what are you conscientizing yeah. me? It's better to stay with uh, Tramador. It's better yeah. to be with the boys. Well, with the challenges that we have, some of them, they're like, can this really be true? Can police say, we are not here to arrest you? A lot of people are not sure that the police <laughs> is still your friend. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, we police, we are the people's friends. <laughs> I, I remember so. when I was appointed, to, I was a DPO in Egypt here in Lagos, and some court guys I had had encounters with, of course, while I was there, they, they took to flight somewhere, arrested somewhere, prosecuted, sent to jail. So when they heard, some of them reach out to people who were close to me, they say, is that thing real? Or oh, Auntie BC wants to use the opportunity to come and... Arrest, arrest us, us again. So I said, okay, tell them that this is like the return of NTBC, but it's not for arrest. It is to make your life better. This is a program of the Nigerian Police Force. People will say that, people usually say that in Netherlands, they don't, they don't have anybody in their prison. The prisons are empty. Then the prisons, why? They adopted preventive policy mechanism initiatives, and the result is what they're saying now. These guys are Nigerians. It's not as if we have this pleasure of sending them to jail. Because we discovered that some of them, they go, they come back. It's a circle. So now let's help them. Let's help our country so that our youth can be better. They cannot rot away in jail. It's not just about going to jail. When they go to jail and they come back, then what next? So let us, so this is like an olive branch. We're stretching to them, come to us. The Nigerian Police Force is ready to help. Then let me use your medium, permit me, to call for collaboration. We need collaboration. Individuals are collaborating. I just mentioned somebody. It's, it is not the money we need. Just keep your money and give us the, the, the commitment of scholarship. 
You just, then we have a valuable monitoring and evaluation system whereby we're sure that the children that go to school, they go to school for real. All right. I know you said that preventive policing is, is less cost effective, it's cost effective compared to reactive policing. Or law enforcement. Or law enforcement. But there must be some, what you've mentioned, there, there must be some budget. There's a cost to it. I mean, I remember when the, the UK was plagued with terrorism, they also used this um, avenue, creation of, um, they funded third party organizations like um, CSOs and not for profit organizations to engage these young people so that it reduces the attractiveness of crime. How, how would, would this project be funded, especially from the government or the police um, side of things? I know you're calling for partners, but is there a budget for it? And then the other part of this is how would you leverage um, you know, things like entertainment, sports, um, you know, uh, recreation, that we have influencers that these young people look up to? How would you, and, and sometimes it's through entertainment that you can pass a very strong message yeah. to young people. How would you leverage these um, platforms? Thank you so much. Let me start from the final part of what you said. Entertainment is part of what we use. We have some artists that are uh, before now, uh, poker cover ambassadors, but we are very careful in who we choose. Uh, there are times that when we go online, you see some of our A-list artists in Nigeria flaunting uh, membership of court organizations, which is very, very wrong. Uh, it is not about... It, um, um, if they are arrested, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Internet uh, doesn't forget. So for all those statements they've made about their being proud of being members of courts, the law enforcement can take charge of it. But it will be good if they can use the opportunity to come out. Because there was an office I went to at the Lagos State Police Command. A young man was arrested. The mother and the sister was killed by his rival court, by rival court, just because they were looking for him and he ran away and he went to his mother innocently. The woman didn't know. They were about crossing the road, but he saw them. He took to flight. They gunned down the mother and the sister. And then this guy was arrested. And I was fortunate to enter the office and he said he joined that particular court because of a particular popular artist in Nigeria because he loved him so much, he wanted to be like him, like a model, and he just wanted to do everything this um, artist was doing. Was the artist that, um, arrested? I, I, I don't know. Okay. But you know, it was his confession. Yeah. So I was like, so I, I just want to use this medium. This artist, those artists who are into one court or the other, they did not get to the apex of their career due to their membership of courtism. If they got there through dint of hard work, through date of resilience, because they put in effort in, in um, practicing their song, rehearsing and doing. So why don't they sell that to the youth instead of coming out to? So for the entertainment industry, yes. of course, we are using it. Yes. Then um, for the budget, yes. of course, the IGP is so, the present IGP is so fixated on Pokakov. He's so committed to it to the extent that he has said that he will give every needed support to make sure that it's 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 it gets through. Yeah. Even the, the program we came to do in Lagos, the IGP gave its support in the sense that all the necessary letters to where they're supposed to go, it came out of the office of the Inspector General of Police. So we are not alone in this. There's a program we're having on Saturday, which is a teens being formed, teens, teenagers right. being formed, dangers of courtism and drug abuse. Because we know is at that level they start learning how to smoke cigar. Then they graduate to a bow and injection and everything. Then Where join the Oh, Police College Ikeja okay. at 10.30 a.m. Well, uh, CSP Oku will be, uh, I guess this is the uniform for Pokakov, right? <laughs> I will call it, it Is this a regular uniform? Yeah, but this is what we wear because it's the, not... This is the not, ceremonial. Yeah, this is it. Uh, anyway, but it, I, I this, think, is, this stands for peace. Yes, the I know. The white stands white, for peace. Yes. Yeah. So refreshing. To see that there is a section of the police, people will not ask for fire extinguisher, ask which you carry, ask for Anything. what else do they What's ask for? Weekend. <laughs> weekend for? Know, to see a section of the police promoting peace and promoting uh, development and good conduct and preventing crime. Thank you very much for joining us.